Welcome to another camera review. Today we have the Fed 3 Soviet era rangefinder camera. This was made in the USSR as it says so clearly on the back here. This was made in Kharkiv, which is modern day Ukraine. It's a Leica copy from my understanding. Uh, and so it's not gonna be sort of as smooth and well engineered as, as something from the German company, but it does produce amazing images. And that's a surprise to me because there's so many qualities of this camera that are really just counting against it that would make you think that it just could not make up to be a good camera. Uh, one of those things is the rangefinder viewing area is tiny. You can even just see from the hole here that getting your eye up to that is not gonna work super well. And when you actually look through, the actual rangefinder patch is also tiny and very faint. In practice, however, as evidenced by you know multiple ro rolls that I've shot on this, it turns out that you can focus very easily on this. Framing, not so easy because you can't even see the edges of the frame. It's such a small viewfinder area. The others, much, much bigger issue with this camera is that if you change the shutter speed, which can go up to 500 on this camera, without cranking right here, you can actually destroy the entire shutter mechanism in your camera and just ruin the camera. Now, I bought this camera for 20 euros here in Slovakia off of a used camera market. And that's one of the reasons I think this is actually a great camera is because of the price. Um, and so if, if we can treat these well and not, not ruin them, I think we can keep them working for a long time. Um, the other thing uh, that's a little bit wonky about my version of this camera anyhow is that the f-stop numbers on the lens don't line up with anything. So you actually have to count your stops to know what f-stop you're at. So if I want f8, I go all the way to the right to 16 and I click twice to get to 8. If I want 5.6, I go all the way to the left and click twice to get to 5.6. Um, it's, it's wonky, um, but it does have a 52 millimeter f2.8 lens. Uh, it renders details incredibly. Uh, it, it is actually incredibly sharp wide open as well, which I was very surprised about. Um, and it has, it produces images with great tones. So I did mostly black and white with this. I, sh I shot a roll of Potsdam 100 from Lomography. I also shot a roll of uh, T-Max 100 with this. And uh, I was just, I was amazed at the, at the negative sheets that came out of this thing. Um, and one of the other things that you're going to want to do when you get this camera is to pop the back off, screw off the lens, and this has a cloth focal plane shutter, which over the years will get little pinhole leaks in it, which will damage your negatives if you just get the camera used and start shooting with it and it has these holes, it's no good. So what you want to do is hold it up to a window uh, or a bright light and look for any sort of light coming through, which is what I did. It had pinholes all over it. And what you want to do is you want to get a, a fabric paint marker, a black fabric paint marker, and paint both sides of the shutter. This is what I did. Uh, let it dry and do that about three or four times. Now this camera is in, in completely light proof and it works great. But that first time you get the camera, you want to check that, any fabric focal plane shutter camera you want to do that with. One of the few things that I really like about this camera is the loading mechanism, which a lot of people don't like, but I actually really like it. It has a, a separate take-up spool here, so you want to make sure you have that when you get the camera, otherwise it might be a little difficult. Uh, but it has a, a little fish hook here, which connects into the sprocket holes of your negative, and it makes it so that it actually can't slip out. Uh, and what I really like about that is that it actually gives you a bit more of a peace of mind that when you close the whole hood on this thing that it's actually going to pull through. It's not just like a sprocket gear that could slip. Um, it's, it's an actual mechanism that holds onto your film. I think the... The things about this camera that, that make it wonky are 
are completely overlookable uh, by sort of the quality of the lens and the quality of the manufacturing. This is an old camera and all I had to do was put a little paint on the shutter and it works amazingly. I went out and shot this camera with three or four other vintage cameras at the same time and this was the most reliable and produced the most consistent negatives in terms of focus, in terms of framing, strangely, and uh, in terms of actual, uh, you know, tonal range, uh, which I'm sure has more to do with metering, but, you know, it's, it's a great lens. I haven't tried, uh, as it is a, a removable lens, I haven't tried other lens mounts, but I think it might be uh, a requirement to, to maybe get a viewfinder or something for a different focal length than this because of the, the rangefinder aspect of this being tuned to a 52 millimeter lens. Um, I, I think that this is a really nice introduction to a rangefinder if you can get it for, for as cheap as 20 to even 50 euros, I think, is a great price or $50. Um, it's it's a it's a heavy camera it's well built it's kind of like you know driving a tank in a way it's not quiet when you crank it it makes this whirring sound uh, everything clicks and creaks and cranks but it produces beautiful images and i'll show a few of those there i i shot on mostly black and white so i'll show some some prints possibly some negatives that i've scanned and you can let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching.